Hello students, welcome to the third lecture in this series of differential equations. We will now move on to a slightly different uh, perspective, the geometric viewpoint. We will have a, a relook at the predator prey model. So, we take the Volterra Lotka system of differential equations that we saw in the very first lecture. The, it says dx by dt equals a minus ax plus bxy dy by dt equal to ky minus cxy as you see in the slide that is just displayed. What does it mean to say that we have a solution of this differential equation? We have to find x as a function of time and y as a function of time. Put these two functions of time together and form the pair xt comma yt. So now this is now a point moving in the plane. The pair xt comma yt is a parametrized curve in the plane. One would like to know what this curve looks like. Once again, solving the system of differential equations means finding two functions xt comma yt. And so we get a parametrized curve xt comma yt. Let us call this curve c in the xy plane. Now we want to understand the Cartesian equation of this curve. How do we find the Cartesian equation of the curve? We are given dx by dt and we are given dy by dt. So let us apply the chain rule and let us write dx by dy is dx by dt divided by dy by dt. The dot over the x represents the time derivative. So dx by dy is going to be x dot upon y dot. But what is x dot? Look at the first equation here. Minus ax plus bxy. What is y dot? Look at the second equation. Ky minus cxy. The x factors from the numerator and the y factors from the denominator. And so we get this equation 1.14 which is obviously a variable separable equation and you know by now how to deal with this variable separable equation 1.14. Alright, so let us look at this equation 1.14. X and Y denote populations and the population has to be non-negative, it has to be positive. So we are looking at the differential equation in the first quadrant. Okay, so we may assume without loss of generality that x and y are both positive. Also let us assume that the denominator is not 0, the numerator is not 0. That is by minus a is not 0 and k minus cx is not 0. So let us steer away from these two uh, points and so what do we get? We separate the variables and we get, we separate the variables here. We divide by x and multiply by k minus cx and so we get this k minus cx upon x dx by dy equal to by minus a upon y. Well, integrate both sides with respect to y and what do you get? You get k log x. There is no need to put the absolute value because x is positive. Similarly, y is positive so there will be no modulus sign under the logarithm. So, we get k log x minus cx plus a log y minus b y equals a constant. The constant of integration has been denoted by the letter capital E. Why capital E? We shall see in a moment. Note that 1.15 is the Cartesian equation of the parameterized curve x t comma y t. So, you are familiar with this. Take a circle in the plane x equal to cos theta y equal to sin theta. Those are the parametric equations of a circle. What is the Cartesian equation? x squared plus y squared equals 1. Or you could take x equal to a cosine theta, y equal to b sine theta. The parametric equations of an ellipse. The Cartesian equation is x squared upon a squared plus y squared upon b squared equals 1. To give a third example from coordinate geometry, we could be looking at the 
parabola y squared equal to 4ax. There is a Cartesian equation. The parametric equation is x equals 80 squared and y equal to 280. So, you know, you know this transition between parametric equations and Cartesian equations. So, what you see is that equation 1.15 over here is the Cartesian equation for the curve C, for this curve C. Namely, the curve, the solution of this differential equation gives rise to a curve xt, yt. This curve is denoted by letter C and what we have found is the Cartesian equation. This equation 1.15 curve itself is called the phase curve. The curve itself is called the phase curve for the system of differential equations. All right. Note that this equation 1.15 is a very interesting equation. It's a very interesting equation. What does 1.15 say? It says that k log x minus cx plus a log y minus by is always constant. In other words, it means that this combination that you see k log xt minus cxt plus a log yt minus byt, this combination is always constant. Its value is e. It doesn't change with time, which means that this is going to be some kind of a conserved quantity. This combination is constant in time. It does not vary in time. Now, if you have a mechanical system, a system coming from classical mechanics, a conservative system, then you know that the energy is going to be conserved. If you take a pendulum equation or the harmonic oscillator, simple harmonic oscillator, you know that the total energy is always conserved. The conservation of this quantity is very similar to the conservation of energy. And let us simply call it the conservation of ecological energy in some sense. Well, whatever, just by analogy, I am just calling it conservation of ecological energy. That's why I use the letter E to denote this constant of integration. Now, let me say a few more things about phase curve. It is also natural to ask for a picture of these phase curve. How does this equation, if you take this 1.15, if you take equation 1.15 and you ask for a plot of this curve in the xy plane, how would these curves look like? This equation is a complicated equation. Had it been x squared plus y squared equal to e, then it's easy for you to plot them. They are concentric circles. If e becomes large, the radius becomes large, you get a larger circle. So as e keeps increasing, you get a concentric circles. But unfortunately, this is not the equation of a circle. It's a more complicated equation. How does one sketch this curve? It is not difficult to sketch this curve. But what you would need in order to do so will be some basic concepts from calculus of several variables. You will need a few concepts from the calculus of several variables and uh, that would take us a little outside the scope of the present course and so we, I shall not get into the nitty gritty of how to sketch those curves. I will just make one comment that these curves are closed curves in the plane. Just as the family of circles or the family of ellipses are closed curves, this family 1.15 as E varies, they are family of closed curves. If you keep changing E, if you make E larger and larger, the curves, the closed curves will become larger and larger. To understand how to draw these curves, I'll uh, just give you a reference. For those whose curiosity has been aroused, you can consult this book by Paul Glendening. The title of the book is Stability, Instability and Chaos. It's a very interesting book and those of you who want to understand how to sketch these curves for the volterra lotka model may consult this book. I would like to also point out a very nice uh, article in the, in the website which you can download, it's available for free. And these notes 
contain a very beautiful picture of these phase curves. The family of curves given by 1.15 has been plotted in this article. You could try that. Okay. Happy reading. So, now let us look at the phase diagrams that arise in physics. So, let us look at a simple looking differential equation dx by dt equal to y dy by dt equals minus x equation 1.16. Equation 1.16 is really the simple harmonic motion. The equations of the simple harmonic motion can also be written like, like this with the frequency omega squared equals 1. Now, I want to understand the phase curves for 1.16. Now, you can directly look at 1.16 and you can see that x equal to sin t, y equal to cos t is a solution of this equation 1.16. So, what do you think are the phase curves for 1.16? They are very simple. They are circles. So, the phase curves of 1.16 are the curves r sin t, comma r cos t x of t equal to r sin t, y of t equals r cosine t. r sin t comma r cos t, they are circles in the plane, all of them centered at the origin. But let us try to see it in a slightly different way. Let us divide one by the other and let us write dy by dx is again what? What is dy by dx? y dot divided by x dot dy by dx is dy by dt divided by dx by dt that is minus x upon y again that's a variable separable equation it's a variable separable equation proceed along the usual lines and you will get x squared plus y squared equal to c we have got our concentric circles so the phase curves are concentric circles Simple though the system is, there is one important comment that I'd like to make regarding this system. Equation 1.17 carries with it less information than the original system 1.16. What do you mean by that? What does it mean to say that we solve 1.16? We have to find x as a function of time and y as a function of time. What does it mean to say we are solving 1.17? Solving 1.17 simply means finding a relationship between x and y, namely x squared plus y squared equal to c. So, getting the equation x squared plus y squared equal to c is very different from saying x equal to r cosine t and y equal to r sine t. The circle x squared plus y squared equal to c has many different parameterizations and sin t comma cos t is only one of the many parameterizations. Another parameterization could be x equal to 1 minus t squared by 1 plus t squared, y equal to 2t by 1 plus t squared. You must have encountered this in your coordinate geometry courses or calculus courses. The circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1 can be parameterized as cosine t comma sine t. It can be parameterized as sine t comma cosine t. It can be parameterized as 1 minus t squared by 1 plus t squared comma 2t by 1 plus t squared. There are many, many different ways of parameterizing the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1. So, giving a relation between x and y is far less informative than explicitly solving this differential equation 1.16. So, 1.17 carries less information than 1.16. Let me look at one more system and I will come back to this comment later. So, consider the pair of equation dy by dt equals 2xy, dx by dt equals 1 plus x squared. You work in the first quadrant. Well, I am going to divide one by the other. So, I will have to worry about y being 0 or x being 0. Do not worry about it. Work in the first quadrant x bigger than 0, y bigger than 0. Okay. Now, you want to get a first order equations out of 1.19.
you want to understand the phase curves of 1.19. What is it again? dy by dx equals y dot upon x dot. What is y dot? y dot is the derivative of y with respect to time and that is given by 2xy. What is x dot? The time derivative of x and that is 1 plus x squared. So dy by dx is y dot upon x dot which should be 2xy upon 1 plus x squared. Again, you see a variable separable equation. You got a variable separable equation, you know exactly how to deal with it. So, I will leave it to you to complete the problem. Question in this example 1.19, can you explicitly integrate 1.19? Can you find y as a function of t and x as a function of t satisfying this equation 1.19? You can. You can actually do that. Because you can first solve the second equation dx by dt equal to 1 plus x squared. Get your x, put it in the first equation and get your y. So here again is a, is a case where the two equations can be solved explicitly to get x as a function of t and y as a function of t. Whereas what I am asking you is the phase curve. That means the relation between x and y. One more example. Consider the pair of differential equation dx by dt equals 1 upon 1 plus y squared dy by dt equals 1 upon 1 plus x squared. So problem is to find the phase curves of 1.21 by obtaining a differential equation of the form 1.20 that is get dy by dx equal to f of xy. What is dy by dx in this case? It is going to be 1 plus y squared upon 1 plus x squared. Again, a variable separable equation and you can integrate this variable separable equation and you can find a relation between x and y. Please complete this exercise and find the phase curves. Sketch the phase curves for various values of con. There will be an integration constant. So, we change the integration constant, you will get a different curve. So, you get a family of curves. So, please do that. It is very easy. You got to get dy by dx equal to 1 plus y squared upon 1 plus x squared. So, you can guess what it is going to be. You get tan inverse of x equals tan inverse of y plus constant c, which is a constant of integration. And so you'll have to apply tan to both sides. You get x equal to tan of tan inverse of y plus c. And so you proceed. And you get a relation between x and y. Okay, now we go to the next issue. Let us look at the system dx by dt equal to y phi of xy and dy by dt equals minus x into of x y. Again you do dy by dx. Again divide one by the other. What do you notice? The phi disappears. The phi completely disappears. You get dy by dx equals minus x upon y. dy by dx equals minus x upon y. Which means again a variable separable equation. Again you get x squared plus y squared equal to c. So, the remarkable feature is that no matter what this phi is, the phase curves of 1.22 are all circles x squared plus y squared equal to c squared, regardless of what phi is. In particular, if I take phi equal to 1, if I take phi equal to 1, what does 1.22 read? dx by dt equal to y, dy by dt equals minus x. You know how to solve that. dx by dt equal to y, dy by dt equal to minus x, which means x of t equal to r sin t and y of t equals r cosine t. I change the phi and I take the phi of xy to be equal to x squared. Then what happens? Then the solution is no longer sin t and cosine t. You can check. Solution is going to change. 
phase curves are x squared plus y squared equal to c. The phase curves don't change that I just said a little while ago. But this x t equal to c sin t and y t equal to c cos t will no longer work if I take phi of x y equal to x squared. It will work, this one will work if I take phi to be 1. If I take phi to be x squared, this is not going to work anymore. So, when I take phi of x y equal to x squared in 1.22, I want you to find x as a function of time and y as a function of time given some initial conditions x of 0 equal to 1 upon root 2 and y of 0 equal to 1 upon root 2. You will now start scratching your head. How am I going to do this? dx by dt equal to y x squared, dy by dt equal to minus x cubed. How am I going to find x? as a function of t and y as a function of t because the dx by dt equation involves a y, dy by dt involves a x. x. So, there it is come it is a coupled system of equation and I cannot individually solve one of them and substitute into the other as it happened in the previous example. So, what you see is that we are gradually progressing to more and more complicated e uh, equations where finding x t and finding y t individually is going to be not easy. But I say that this is not difficult either in this example. How to do it? Here is a hint. The hint says you know that the point x t y t lies in the circle that you know. So, x of t is going to be c cosine psi t, y of t equal to c sine psi t where psi is a function of t. All I am saying is that psi of t equal to t will not work. It will work only when phi is 1, but phi is not 1, phi is x squared. So, this, this function psi t is going to be more complicated. So, any point on the circle is cosine of something, sine of something. Any point on the circle is cos theta comma sine theta. And so, the theta becomes a function of t or in this case, I use the notation psi of t. So, I said x t equal to c cosine psi t, y equal to c sine psi t and I had to determine psi t. c has to be 1. Why is c 1? Because look at this initial condition x of 0 equal to 1 upon root 2, y of 0 equal to 1 upon root 2 and x squared plus y squared is c squared. So, c must be 1. So, c is 1. That is clear. So, you have to obtain a differential equation for psi t. How are you going to obtain a differential equation for psi t? Substitute x of t equal to cosine psi t into the equation 1.22, y of t equal to sine of psi t into the equation 1.22 and you will get psi dot equal to something. You will get a differential equation for psi. And that differential equation is a variable separable equation and you can actually integrate and you can get it. So, you see finding x explicitly as a function of t and y explicitly as a function of t has become slightly more complicated. The exercise shows that when we change this function phi, what happens? The phase curves do not change. The phase curves are always x squared plus y squared is c squared. What changes is the parameterization. In the in one of the cases, it is sin t comma cosine t. In the other case, it is sine of psi t cos of psi t, and the psi t is a slightly more complicated function. So the parameterization has changed. The curve is again the circle. Like I said, the circle has infinitely many parameterizations. Which is the correct parameterization? That will be the solution of the differential equation. So, let me make a general remark. So, we have seen a number of examples 1.16, 1.19 and 1.22. What is 1.16? It is a harmonic oscillator dx by dt equal to y. 1.16 is dx by dt equal to y, dy by dt equals minus x. What is 1.19? dy by dt equal to 2xy, dx by dt equal to 1 plus x squared. Again, I repeat, you can solve the second equation, obtain x as a function of time, put it in the first equation, 
and then obtain y as a function of time. So, again here we are able to come do it and equation to 1.22 which we have just now discussed. So, in these three examples we are explicitly able to find x and y as functions of time and this is a very rare situation. It is a very rare situation usually it will not happen. Take the Volterra Lotka equation dx by dt equals minus ax plus bxy dy by dt equals ky minus cxy. You get this conservation of ecological energy. This is all you can get. You cannot go any further and obtain x explicitly as a function of time and y explicitly as a function of time. So, you see there are limitations. In this equation, you have to be content with equation 1.25. You cannot, unlike the previous three examples, obtain x and y individually as functions of time. But in practice, this equation, this phase curve is adequate for all practical purposes. It turns out that the phase curve is adequate enough. We can get all our information about the behavior of the system from equation 1.25. Let us do one more example. Let us look at the pendulum equation from your, uh, last lectures. The pendulum equation recall is d2y by dt squared plus g upon l sin y is 0, where y is the angular displacement from the mean position. The pendulum is displaced from the mean position and set into oscillation and the displacement from the mean position is yt, the angular displacement. So, what is the angular velocity? The derivative of angular displacement is the angular velocity. dy by dt is z of t, that is the angular velocity. You differentiate the angular velocity, you get the angular acceleration. So, dz by dt is d2y by dt squared, the angular acceleration. But the differential equation gives you that d2y by dt squared is minus g upon l sin y. So, let us consolidate these things together. dy by dt, we are going to call it z. And dz by dt is minus g upon l sin y. Now, look at equation 1.27. That is exactly what I said. dy by dt is z, dz by dt is minus g upon l sin y. Again, you see that we have got a system of equations, a coupled system of differential equations. Finding y explicitly as a function of time and finding z explicitly as a function of time is going to be a difficult business and put the two e uh, functions together yt comma zt and you get a parametrized curve and these parametrized curves are the phase curves for the pendulum equation either 1.26 or 1.27 they are really the same. So, the pair yt comma zt are the phase curves for the pendulum equation 1.27. So, obtain a relationship between zt and yt. Obtain a relationship between zt and yt. In other words, obtain the Cartesian equations for the phase curves. Obtain the Cartesian equations for the phase curves. And interpret your result physically. You may have seen the picture of this phase diagram. If you plot the phase curves for various values of the integration constant, you will get a one parameter family of curves in the yz plane. And this picture is called the phase diagram. You have probably seen this phase diagram for a pendulum equation in your physics courses. You also have probably seen the physical interpretation for this relation between z and y. 
there is a relation between z and y right and that relationship has a meaning what is it it is the law of conservation of energy the pendulum is a conservative mechanical system and the law of conservation of energy gives you relationship between zt and yt and that relationship is what you will get as the cartesian equation for the phase curves you can also use a physical intuition to sketch these phase curves these phase curves are going to be closed curves because when you set the pendulum in oscillation the pendulum starts swinging and it exhibits oscillatory motion and so these phase curves are going to be closed circuits however if you give the pendulum a sharp push if you push it too hard what the pendulum do it will go it will go on the it will go right at the top and it will complete the circuit and it will come down and it will ex, and it will exhibit circular motions and that will also enable you to accordingly draw the phase curves for large values of the energy try that out or maybe consult some physics books whatever the purpose of this exercise is to bring out the connection between the phase curves and physics the law of conservation of energy finding individually y of t and z of t as functions of time is going to be difficult it is going to involve elliptic functions in the last lecture i stopped with the elliptic functions and here we encounter these again these elliptic functions appear very naturally in physics we get easily the law of conservation of energy which is the relationship between the uh, functions yt and z okay now we come to the next phase of this series of lectures namely differential equations of the form m dx plus n dy equal to 0 in books you will often see a differential equation being written like like uh, equation 1.28 in the slides m x y dx plus n x y dy equal to 0 now this equation 1.28 is somewhat controversial because what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of the dx and the dy floating around we have been constantly saying that dy by dx in calculus is not dy divided by dx it is a derivative of y with respect to x it is just a symbol dy by dx it is not dy divided by dx dy is not a number and dx is not a number so here in equation 1.28 suddenly the dx and the dy has been have been separated they were inseparable right in in your differential calculus and integral calculus courses now they have been separated oh how cruel well the expression m dx plus n dy can be defined in mathematics in very precise terms there is a way to do it but we shall not do so here because this is not the place to do that so what do we do so what do we do with equation 1.28 we must clarify the meaning of this equation 1.28 before proceeding because numerous differential equations are going to be presented in the form 1.28 so it is urgent to actually clarify the meaning of m dx plus n dy and we shall do so now we shall now proceed to clarify this so first let us begin by recalling the discussion that we have had so far we have seen that differential equations that arise naturally in the physical sciences and the biological sciences are usually systems of differential equations they are pairs of differential equations voltaire lot ka equations dx by dt equal to minus ax plus bxy dy by dt equal to ky minus cxy the simple harmonic motion dx by dt equals y dy by dt equals minus x again a system the pendulum equation that we have just seen can be written as a system so we are looking at 
systems of differential equations. And if it is a mechanical system, we will be looking at the time derivative. So, what kind of differential equations have you encountered so far? They are of the form 1.29 dx by dt equal to nxy dy by dt equals minus mxy. These are the kinds of differential equations that we have encountered so far. So, what does this mean? For a mechanical system, I just said t will represent the time variable. And therefore, n of xy and minus of m of xy are the components of the velocity. If x and y are components of the displacement, then dx by dt comma dy by dt uh, is the vector of velocity. In other words, n and minus m are the components of the velocity of the particle. And the problem of solving this differential equation 1.29 amounts to finding x explicitly as a function of time and y explicitly as a function of time. But we have just seen that in practice it is rarely possible to obtain from 1.29 x as a function of time and y as a function of time. The classic Example is that of the Volterra Lotka equations. Even when you can do it, it is not entirely easy to do it. Okay. So, we have to be content with simply the phase curves. The phase curves are much easier to obtain as we have seen time and again. Divide one by the other dy by dx is y dot upon x dot which is minus m upon n and 1.30 is a differential equation connecting x and y. But we could have equally well proceeded differently instead of dividing y dot by x dot we do it the other way around we get dx by dt divided by dy by dt x dot divided by y dot or dx by dy equal to minus n upon m. So, we got on the on the one hand the differential equation 1.30 and we got the differential equation 1.31 and when you go back to the system 1.29 there is no distinction between x and y x and y are variables which enjoy equal status. So, there is no partiality, there is no need to be favorable to x or to y. So, both of them receive the same importance. So, it is not clear to me whether 1.30 or 1.31 is preferred. These two equations have equal importance. So, in view of the symmetry, between x and y in view of the equal roles played by x and y we denote by 1.28 either equation 1.30 or equation 1.31. So, 1.28 is a way of combining both 1.30 and 1.31 and writing it as a single equation. So, 1.28 should be interpreted as either 1.30 or 1.31. Okay. So, this basically clarifies the meaning of this expression m dx plus n dy equal to 0. Sure, we have separated dx and dy, we have been cruel, dx and dy were inseparable, but we have separated them, but the interpretation has been given, a precise interpretation has been given. 1.28 should be thought of as 1.30 or 1.31. So, now we have given a very clear interpretation of m dx plus n dy. So, from a practical point of view, interesting first order equations like 1.28, 1.28 is an equation that arises from systems 1.29. So, the study of equations like 1.29 gives rise to a differential equation 1.28 and 1.28 I repeat is simply 1.30 or 1.31 depending on whether you want to give x a more favorable position 
or whether or why as the uh, more favorable status. Okay, so this is stated differently. The pair 1.29 is more fundamental and that is a more interesting object under consideration. 1.29 is the basic object of study and 1.28 is simply an auxiliary tool and unfortunately in practice it is not possible to completely solve 1.29 it is not possible to get x as a function of time and y as a function of time all we can do is to solve this equation 1.28 that is why equation like m dx plus n dy equal to 0 are taught in great detail because this is all that we can really solve all right another point i want to make now let us look at a slightly different system we taken the system we are taking the system dx by dt equal to n dy by dt equal to minus m what i do is that i multiply the right hand side of both of them by the same factor mu of xy remember we did a one simple example dx by dt equals y times phi of xy dy by dt equals minus x up into phi of xy where phi of xy is any function of x and y what did we see we saw that the phase curves don't change the phase curves are always circles what changes then what changes is when you change the function phi the parameterization changes so now we are looking at the more general situation i do the same thing start out with this equation dx by dt equal to n dy by dt equal to minus m and multiply the right hand sides by the same factor mu mu of xy again you will see divide one by the other the mu disappears so the mu disappears that means that introducing the factor mu will not change the phase curves so phase curves of 1.32 and the phase curves of 1.29 are identical what changes the parameterization will change why would the parameterization change think in terms of physics what does equation 1.29 tell you it tells you that the components of the velocity are n and minus m what have i done i have changed the velocity by putting in a factor of mu of xy a scalar factor mu so the velocity changes its magnitude but the direction doesn't change so the the speed of the particle changes but the trajectory of the particle doesn't change the phase curves doesn't change the velocity along the phase curves has changed so the parameterization along the phase curve will change so the phase curves of 1.32 are also the same as the phase curves of 1.29 so it doesn't matter whether i convert 1.29 into 1.32 because we have agreed that the phase curves are the only things that we can ultimately determine because it is very rare to actually find x as a function of t and y as a function of t this is a very important fact which is usually not emphasized in books and i'm i'm going slow with this because this is a very important point now i want to draw your attention to a certain article by gian carlo rota what we have done in the last couple of slides is that we have meticulously elucidated the meaning of this expression m dx plus n dy equal to 0 you will wonder why is it that i'm spending so much time on this matter and this is based on a philosophical article written by a great mathematician gian carlo rota who is no more and he has written his philosophical view about the teaching of differential equations and this article is available online and 
Rota's comments about m dx plus n dy equal to 0 have prompted me to spend a long time on elucidating this meaning of this expression. However, I must hastily add a disclaimer. The article is a long article and there are many points that Rota addresses in this article and I am in agreement with some of them, particularly the one that I just said, but generally I am in disagreement with many other points addressed by Rota. So, this is a intellectual disagreement because this is really philosophical issues and pedagogical issues. It is not that the mathematics is incorrect. The mathematics is absolutely precise. What we are talking about is interpretations, the philosophical underpinnings and the pedagogical issues. What to emphasize in courses and what not to emphasize in courses. And I, I agree with Rota on couple of things and I disagree with him on many things, but that is life. Ok. So, now let us look at some more geometrical aspects of differential equations. I like geometry, so I spend more time on geometry. We have seen that a differential equation m dx plus n dy equal to 0 gives you a family of curves. What is that family of curves? The phase curves of the system. The phase curves of the system. It is a one parameter family of, of curves. Like your x squared plus y squared equal to c is a one parameter family of circles. In the case of the Volterra Lotka equation, you will get a one parameter family of closed curves filling the first quadrant. In the case of the pendulum equation, you are again going to get a one parameter family of curves and you are going to look at some physics books for the phase diagram. So, equation 1.28 gives you a one parameter family of curves. Conversely, given a one parameter family of curves, can we obtain a differential equation out of it? Yes, we can. One parameter family of curves are very pretty objects. They appear in electrostatics. They appear in fluid mechanics. How do they arise in electrostatics? Think of the equipotential lines, equipotential surfaces. You have got a distribution of charges. Then there are surfaces which are called equipotential surfaces. Take these equipotential surfaces and slice them by the xy plane and you get equipotential lines on the xy plane. For example, I strongly recommend you to turn to page 635 of Resnick and Halliday's book. I already mentioned this book earlier and on page number 635 of the same edition mind you, there are some beautiful pictures of equipotential lines. Now, let us look at some interesting examples of such families. The simplest example is a family of concentric circles. Differentiate this equation. You get 2x plus 2y dy by dx equal to 0. The constant c disappears when you differentiate. Divide by 2, you get x plus y dy by dx is 0. That is the differential equation. So, 1.33 is the differential equation for the one parameter family of curves x squared plus y squared equal to c. Pretty easy, eh? But now, let us proceed to another example where it is not going to be so user friendly. Let us consider the family of circles touching the y axis. There is a y axis, draw a circle touching the y axis at the origin. The center must be c comma 0 and the radius is again c. And so, what is the equation of the circle? x minus c the whole squared plus y squared equal to c squared. The c squared cancels out and you get equation 1.34 on the slide. 
differentiate 1.34 with respect to x and divide by 2, you get x plus y dy by dx equals c. So, from c, put this value of c back into 1.34 and you get a differential equation 1.36. Again, use 1.35 where we have the c and substitute it into 1.34 and do a little bit of rearrangements you will get this beautiful differential equation 1.36 and 1.36 is the differential equation for this one parameter family of circles touching the y axis at the origin. Now I am going to give you a little exercise. The exercise is not difficult but it is essential that you work it out. We have regarded when we differentiate this equation 1.34 we are assuming that y is a function of x. That means y is implicitly a function of x. Is this a valid assumption? Sketch these circles and find out what happens at the origin and find out what happens at 2c, 0. In the neighborhood of this point, is it legal to say y is a function of x? Should we not say x is a function of y? Should we not regard x as an implicit function of y and should we not proceed by differentiating 1.34 with respect to y instead of differentiating with respect to x? This, that's correct. We must regard x as a function of y and we must proceed by differentiating with respect to y. But we get the same answer. We again get, get the same differential equation 1.36 and that is something that we must check. That's a little exercise for you. It's a very easy exercise and I urge you to do it. Now, after you do this exercise, do you see the merits of writing equation 1.30 and 1.31 in the symmetrical form 1.28? Let me just go back a few slides for you. So, after you do this exercise, do you agree with me that it is better to work with the form 1.28 because sometimes you may have to regard y as a function of x and sometimes you might have to regard x as a function of y as this example clearly shows. And so making the thing unsymmetrical is not advisable and working with a more symmetrical form of the equation 1.28 is advisable, is a desirable feature. All right. So, you will agree with me that 1.28 is the most desirable feature. Now, I am going to give you a little more exercises, but this time it is going to be fun with colored pens. I want you to sketch those circles touching the y axis at the origin with blue pen. Next, sketch circles in with red pen touching the x axis at the origin and cutting the blue circles at right angles. So, do this sketching of these curves and obtain a beautiful picture. Produce your artwork in blue and red pens and then go back to Resnick and Halliday's book page 635 and look at figure 29.15. Does your picture closely approximate to this when the length of the electric dipole becomes smaller and smaller? So, with this interesting exercise, I shall close today's lecture. Thank you.